Hello Year 12. I am so sorry that this lesson is late. I am having a day of complete IT failures, um, but I'm glad that I got it to you at least on the right day and the right half of the day, hopefully. So today is our second lesson on intuitionism. Last lesson we had a general introduction and we had a look at more. I remember that more criticizes naturalism. Hopefully by now you have done the quiz on teams that I have set for you. It's a Microsoft Office multi-choice quiz. So do that before you do this lesson. That's my way of checking that you understand the previous stuff. So before I end the unit, I can go over anything that lots of you misunderstand. You will spot, my lovelies, that there are some questions that are repeated and they were questions that quite a few of you got wrong previously. You also need to have either um, as you're watching this video or I will also send you the original PowerPoint but at some point you need your Cornell notes template that you can fill in and that's what you're going to submit on Teams. So on Teams you're going to do the quiz, submit the Cornell notes. So today's thinker is Pritchard, H.A. Pritchard to give him his definition, his full title rather and Pritchard is the named scholar on the spec along with more, and so you could have a question that focuses just on Pritchard, or you could have a general question in which you can introduce both more and Pritchard, and perhaps point out where they are both similar and different. And our question for today's lesson is taken directly from the specification, and it's what does Pritchard mean when he says that ought to do has no definition? And please note, it's not the end of the world, but we should spell scholars' names correctly. It gives the air of a student who's going for a grade A, A star. Pritchard doesn't have a T in. I keep spelling him with a T. I'm hoping he's spelt right on every slide, but he's P-R-I-C-H-A-R-D. So, just a little bit of background about Pritchard. Um, along with Moore, he was a British philosopher and his dates are 1871 to 1941, writing really in the 20th century, um, writes quite a bit between the two world wars. But a really important paper of his is Does Moral Philosophy Rely on a Mistake? And that was written in 1912. So like Moore, he is challenging the very basis that moral philosophy is built upon. So like Moore, he's saying moral philosophers are asking the wrong kind of questions and indeed asking questions to which there is no answer. So like Moore, starting from a very similar starting point. So Pritchard agrees with Moore that moral knowledge is beyond definition. However, that doesn't mean that it's meaningless, it's just beyond definition because it's intuitive. It's part of that innate knowledge that we can immediately bring to mind. It's a priori knowledge, it's not based on observations of the world. But whereas more has a huge focus on goodness, and for more, it's goodness that can't be broken down into its constituent parts and spoken about in the same way as other qualities. For Pritchard, the focus is on the sense of obligation or duty. That's the big difference between the two. So duty for Pritchard is not the product of reason, it's the product of intuition that innate, immediate thinking that we can all do. Pritchard is classed as a deontological intuitionist. He's not consequential like Moore. So that's the other linked big difference and something you could tease out in an essay. And that is because he has this focus on duty, a little bit like Kant, and Pritchard has written an awful lot about Kant. He criticises utilitarianism, 
because he says all that it can do is say that this would be popular or desirable. It doesn't create that sense of duty that Pritchard says we all feel and is what makes those ethical decisions for us. So again, that's why you've got another difference between Pritchard and Moore. Remember, Moore was about, yes, want to produce the best consequences, very much influenced by utilitarianism, and Pritchard is criticising utilitarianism. Utilitarianism has been in the background of all of our meta-ethical theories so far. Remember that Bradley was both influenced by utilitarianism and rejected elements of utilitarianism. Bradley, of course, is our philosopher for naturalism. When we come back round to study utilitarianism, we will return to some of this. So Jonathan Dancy is a modern British philosopher, still alive. Um, random fact that is of no use to you whatsoever, but it doesn't stop me in class, so it's not going to stop me at home. Jonathan Dancy's son is Hugh Dancy, and Hugh Dancy is married to Claire Danes, the American actress who stars in Homeland, which is one of my favourite programmes on TV. There's a theory, isn't there, that you can link any two people in the world through, is it five or seven steps? But we've got from Pritchard to Claire Danes in, what, two or three steps? Completely useless information. But anyway, Jonathan Dancy is a modern British moral philosopher and he has written an awful lot about both Pritchard and about intuitionism. But he's not an intuitionist himself. And in one of his papers about Dancy, about Pritchard rather, it's Dancy writing about Pritchard and trying to explain this idea of us feeling obligations that are beyond definition. He said that if we were to ask ourselves why we shouldn't torture chipmunks, I mean I want to say immediately who asks themselves that but we'll go with it, why we shouldn't torture chipmunks, we just end up with a conclusion it's just something we shouldn't do. We don't reason our way there. We just very quickly, intuitively say that's wrong. When I Google imaged torture chipmunks, I went to some really dark places. I don't recommend that you Google image torture chipmunks. But you could use Jonathan Dancy when explaining Pritchard. So going back to Pritchard. So for Pritchard, making ethical decisions is about dealing with competing ethical obligations. We feel like there are multiple things pulling at us and we have to make a choice. And for Pritchard, that's where the intuition kicks in, in that we intuitively know that my obligation to that person or that thing is greater than my obligation to something else. My child is running through the front room if you can hear strange noises. So for example, there we go, running through the front room again. For example, in the case of abortion, when you're trying to make a decision about whether it's right for someone to have an abortion or not, you might be weighing up Weighing up isn't quite the right word because that implies reason. But you are aware that there are different ethical obligations and you will intuitively choose one over the other. So there's the obligation to the mother. There's the obligation to meet the needs of the fetus. And intuitively, you will go to one rather than the other. And we do use reasoning to make ourselves aware of what those different obligations are. So we will think about the issue, but when you're picking one obligation over another, that's where intuition kicks in. So I've put this on a diagram to help. So when we make moral decisions, it is a two-stage process. So first of all, we collect together the facts and the information but then the what shall I do, that's the ethical bit, isn't it? That is down to, to intuition. 
Whereas more is saying that what is good is the intuition bit. Pritchard is doing it slightly differently and he's saying no, the what is my duty is the intuition bit. So if someone came to you and said, should I have an affair with my best friend's wife? You might use reason to think about who are the people in this scenario, what are the different obligations, so, you know, to the your best friend, to your, to your friend, to your best, your friend's friend, and then the wife that he's going to cheat with. That became really complicated. But basically, there would be different people that will be affected by the decision. So there's your, if, you're, if you were observing this, there's the man, there's the husband, and then there's the wife. And there might be the person who's thinking about cheating. He might have a wife as well. And so you would reason who is affected, but then you would use intuition to decide whose needs you're going to prioritise. So we all have, according to Pritchard, an ability to intuit our way, to use that innate thought that we have, that innate ability to moral truth. But as we know, some of us are more able than others. We are not all morally enlightened to the same degree. And that's why people might reach different decisions, not because there are not universal truths out there, but because we don't have the same ability to use that innate reasoning that we have. That's very similar to more, isn't it? In fact, the same as more. So now let's return to our learning question. So what does Pritchard mean when he says ought to do has no definition? What Pritchard means is that the ought to do, the duty, is definitely important because that's what our moral decisions are based on. But this sense of duty is beyond definition. It is intuitive. So just to remind you, my lovelies, you are handing in your Cornell Notes page and automatically your Microsoft Teams quiz will come to me. Thank you very much.